Today we're taking a look at this guy, which is the IKEA Spanx LED light stick. Now I've owned this light for over a month now, and I've actually done a full review and edited, but I wanted to redo the video because I have a few more thoughts on my mind. Now this light comes in two different flavors, which is this one, which is the shorter version, um, as well as the larger version, which is 134 centimeters. I've actually used five of them to do some stage design at uh, my church, and they seem to do a great job. They also come in two flavors of color, which is this one, which is balanced around 4,500 Kelvin, as well as an RGB version. However, the RGB lights didn't look super amazing quality, so I just ended up getting one of these. Now for those at home that have a little bit more spare time and want to start filming at home, I thought this would be a great choice for you because these lights range from $29 all the way up to $69 for the larger version. And it works great if you have a clamp like this one. This one is a small rig clamp, uh, which you're able to hold the light. Now, this plastic is a little bit fragile, so I wouldn't recommend clamping it too hard, uh, but just clamping it down a little bit, it does the job of holding the light. So this light all around is pretty good. It charges by one USB cable and it just has a button to turn it on and off. Now it definitely has its pros and cons. A pro being that it is affordable, it doesn't flicker, uh, and so it's great for a video. But I think some flaws is that it doesn't change color. I wish it was uh, even just balanced at 5600 Kelvin. It would make my life a little bit easier because I'll have to adjust the light to there. And if I turn this one off, bump up my ISO. This is the light as a key light. And it's quite soft, which is nice. If I put it more so there and bring it as close to my face as possible. It does a pretty good job for an affordable light. However, I did have to change out my first one and thankfully IKEA is really easy to exchange and return. Now, as I said, I did buy five for uh, my church and it they seem to work great. Now this light does have just one button to turn it on and off. And if you hold it, sometimes I accidentally just press it a little bit, it'll turn off the light. So this is just something to keep in mind when you are filming with it, um, like over a product or something like that, you might accidentally press it to turn it on and off. As well as it doesn't have any other controls to make it either brighter or dimmer. Uh, which would have been awesome. So that way I could use it as a key light a little bit better and not push my camera so high. But as a practical, this light is definitely a great one, especially if you wanted to just spice up your set a little bit more and have a practical in the background. Now all around for the price point, this light is definitely worth it. It also comes with two brackets which hold the light actually quite firm. This is how we mounted it in the studio at our church. Uh, they are super tight as well as they have just a small hole for a screw or a nail. And since the light is made just out of plastic and it's super light, we only put a small nail on this to hold it up and it worked pretty well. Once you get over the color accuracy and brightness, this light is definitely worth it for $29 only. It's a great filmmaking sidekick. I would recommend if you're using it as a key light to stitch four of them together and use them more so as a Kino flow. This will give you a brighter output so you don't have to push your camera as far. But if you wanted to see me do that, uh, definitely leave a comment down below and I'd love to do that. Anyways, that's it from me. I've been really listening to a podcast called Real Blend, which is a cinematography or filmmaking movie podcast, which is great. So check that out as well as this movie and I'll see you in the next one.